कहा से उसी कुर्सी पे आप बैठेंगे तो नहीं फिर वो यहाँ आ जाएंगे ना नहीं फिर डिस्टेंस परमानेंट होना चाहिए म्यूजिक का चैन नहीं हो सकती डोंट टेक इट सीरियसली सो डॉक्टर बलराम शुक्ला इन द चेयर एंड डॉक्टर पीटर शाह आई नो नथिंग अबाउट योर टॉपिक बट बींग curious i started reading up on on your work a little bit and one of the things obviously i try to do in these introductory and friends and fellows sorry i got so excited um one of the things i try to do in these introductory remarks is you know when the topic is so focused so narrow so specialized i try to open it up obviously so that we can all participate and what fascinates me about the topic because earlier you spoke on panini i got your earlier abstract also insights from panini and grammar on the theory of verbal cognition and today is on the cognition of time in verbs so what fascinates me is the larger topic of language and cognition how does language make sense and our grammarians in india were deeply engaged with this for a variety of reasons one is of course vyakrana was deeply connected to interpretation and understanding of the vedas also and uh, people were trying to understand where in life is the source of meaning so you have an entire school of grammarians and philosophers who believed that meaning was in words and that was what the traditional semantics was about that you uh, try to understand what is uh, you know the different nuances inflections forms of words and that meaning was inherent in words because naam roop se shrishti banti hai you know and uh, this is this was a view of not just i think uh, logicians the nyayikas nyayikas and the vaisheshikas but also panini in a way correct me if i'm wrong and so there was that tradition of uh, looking for meaning and the nirukta um and shiksha were all concerned with unpacking the meaning of words and then comes bhartri hari and in some sense uh, the mimamsa tradition where they said that meaning is not in words but in sentences that the whole sentence is a is a cognitive unit i think that's what bhartri hari was trying to say in vakya padya and how does the sentence mean anything it's through a sphota the whole of the sentence is one unit and uska ek sphot hota hai aur wo sphot jo hai usse prakash hota hai you know uh, in the mind or whatever and of course then the kashmiri uh, tradition picked it up anandavardhan also picked it up vyanjan bhi wahi se aata hai so this is a very fascinating story uh, of indian grammar linguistics semantics and i'm reminded of this wonderful conversation i had with dr k kunjani raja who wrote a great book called indian theories of meaning he had his phd in, uh, from the university of london he came back to india he taught in he taught at the uh, Madras Department of Sanskrit, which he headed, and I was so lucky to meet him because he had retired and he started living in Adyar at the Theosophical Society, and uh, you know, uh, Matilal also had written a book, uh, Bimal, uh, Bimal Krishna B K, Bimal Krishna Matilal, but the 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 word and the world, but in ki kitab jada achhi hai. कुंजनी राजा की एकदम जबरदस्त किताब है एग्जैक्टली यू टुक द यू नो आई 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 रिमेंबर्ड हिम टुडे एंड दैट वंडरफुल कॉन्वर्सेशन एंड ऑफ कोर्स व्हिच आई डिडंट अंडरस्टैंड एनीथिंग आई वाज जस्ट आई न्यू आई वाज इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ अ ग्रेट मैन बट इन हिज प्रेफेस ही सेज इफ आई रिमेंबर राइट दैट देयर आर टू इन फैक्ट आई हैव टेकन आउट दैट पैसेज आई वांट टू रीड इट ही सेज देयर आर टू ब्रॉड पर्सपेक्टिव्स in indian 
ancient Indian thought. I, I just hope I can find the thing I was reading it this morning. Uh, so there are these two broad perspectives in India on the meaning of meaning, okay? And one he calls, he calls uh, one uh, the Khanda Paksha. The Khanda Paksha and the Akhanda Paksha. So these are two ways, you know, in which uh, meaning is thought to have been generated. And uh, basically the Padartha, which was the meaning of words, was the Khanda Paksha. And then, uh, you know, as a, and then he mentions grammarians like Panini, Katyayanan, and Patanjali, and then Yaska, whose etymology was also dedicated to unpacking meanings of words. Then he says the Akhanda Pak, there he puts the Mimamsa school and the detailed study of sentences. And Yaska refers to the Audambarayana, okay, where he says that, you know, uh, basically that the fourfold classification of words into noun, verb, upasarga, and nipata does not hold good. He said, ye, ye to vaisi banaya hai. Parts of speech, what we call parts of speech. He says it's arbitrary. That's what he says. He says that it is the statement as a whole which is regularly present in the perceptive faculty of the hearer that produces meaning. So, you know, it is this rich tradition of language and cognition that that Dr. Scharf is going to speak of today in a very technical and detailed uh, manner, especially with verbs and time, how verbs, you know, make sense and convey time. And the text he's going to look at, which he himself is going to translate, is of Kaunda Bhatta. It's called Vayakkarana Siddhanta Bhushana. He's himself going to translate this text, 16th or 17th century, I think. So we are very proud to have you here, Peter. You know, it was by chance that I inherited you. I didn't have any part in your selection, fellow here. His joining was delayed for a variety of reasons. And everybody said, sir, inka visa status bhi theek nahi hai. I said, no, you can't find a school like him. You know, kaha milenge? So, saal ke ye Transcendental meditation ke baut bade guru hain. To ghar aake inko sikha diya. Pure parivar ko TM sikha diya. Inke bhai sahab ne. Maharishi Mahesh Yogi ke sampark mein aaye. So, la saal ki umar mein ye sanskrit padhne lage. 24 saal mein Brown University mein undergraduate the. Tab puri Gita unhone kanthast kar di. Ek summer mein summer vacation mein mujhe kaise pata hai inka interview hai jo maine to summer vacation ki gita samajh li the an undergrad ma kiya brown university mein bahut achhi university ivy league university hai rhode island mein hai aur tat pashchat university of pennsylvania jahan pe indology ki bahut purani tradition hai and Brown or ye sab the, uh, Theodore William de Barry or ye sab log wahan the jinhone sources of Indian tradition banaya. Bahut achhi kitab hai. Wo Pennsylvania mein PhD ki inhone aur inke jo guru ji the George Cordona sabse bade grammarian bahut mahan vyakaran ka the wo. Mare JNU mein bhi ek semester inhone guzara. Main unse do teen baar mila. तो जॉर्ज कार्डोना के कार्डोना जी के विद्यार्थी हैं और इन्होंने एक संस्कृत डॉक्यूमेंट संस्कृत लाइब्रेरी संस्कृत लाइब्रेरी बनाई है तो अपने खर्चे से अपनी मेहनत से अपनी तपस्या से इसको डिजिटाइज करने की मुहिम इन्होंने हमें बहुत हमको प्रेमचंद जी से भी कहा पूरा इनका जो आ, जो बनाया है सर डॉक्यूमेंट्स संस्कृत लाइब्रेरी इन्होंने जो जो बनाई इसकी एक कॉपी रख लीजिए और बाद में भी साथ-साथ हम लोग काम करते रहेंगे ऐसी इच्छा है हमारी तो इन शब्दों के साथ आई वेलकम यू पीटर्स
and uh, it's been it's been wonderful to have you wrote me a mail about your involuntary from the institute i've already approved it now to talk to you later you know get your uh, for those months then you went to see your mother who is more than 90 years old so uh, that's it. We are looking forward to your presentation. I'll join you from upstairs in a bit. Please. Okay. <laughs> What? <coughs> oh, <she> <coughs> my voice is clear. <coughs> oh, so anamati yo vipashyati ya praniti. Ya in Sherno Dioptam Aman Oman Teupakshianti Shruti Shruta Shruti Vamte Vadami Ahameva Swayamidam Vadami Jam Deve Pier Uttamanu Shepihi Yang kama ye tam tam ukram karumi tam brahmanam tam rishim tam sumedham. Um, these are two verses from the uh, Rig Veda, <clears throat> 125th which say that each speak Bhagambrani Sukta, Bhagambrani is Vak. A, a woman named Vak is the author of this Sukta. She identifies herself with speech. So speech is saying, it's because of me, Maya. Somebody eats. Mayaso anamati. It's because of me that one eats. Because of me that one sees. That one does anything. It's because of me. And then he says, those who don't uh, take me into consideration, who don't respect me, they perish. This, this is the role that language has in our society, that uh, language is what is, is how we, we know what we do. We, when we do anything, we are conscious of it in terms of language. So it's a pervasive part of our, our world. And then I mentioned the next uh, verse, particularly because of the recent discussion about Brahmanism versus those who are against Brahmanism. Brahmanism, the word Brahmana means uh, the one who, who knows Brahma. And Brahma, Brahman, is the absolute. And the absolute is identified with speech in this hymn. 
And uh, speech says in this hymn that Yum, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I tried to find it again. Uh, I make whomever I want a Brahmin, a Rishi, a sage. Speech becomes a Brahmin, a Rishi. It's unfortunate that Indian society has experienced the, the freezing of some categories that have led to exclusion. But the essential tradition over many centuries, over many millennia, three, millennia, three or four millennia, has been this, that it's, it's flexible. The one who knows becomes a Brahmin. And, uh, and, and I see Dr. Chalaha writing this down. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is the this is the way it should be, right? And and those who who don't see it this way should simply be ignored. This is what speech does. Speech herself says, "They who ignore me, they perish." Okay. So um, it's to examine speech and and. Uh, our director has given a good uh, insight, a uh, good uh, overview of the grammarian's uh, project of analog language and the various views. And the grammarians held the view that speech was, uh, gave its meaning in single holes of sentences, in, in a single flash of cognition. Pratinya, pratinya, pratibhad, pratinya, both. Um, and uh, and yet the grammarians recognized that it was valuable to posit an artificial division of language into parts, and it's this artificial division of anal analysis that engages them. So even conscious of the fact that that language is a single whole, uh, they they undertake uh, an extremely fine analysis of which words denote which meanings, which morphemes denote which meanings, and give uh, a precise analysis of this. And I, I just want to remind you of what I showed in my first presentation here uh, that is a, just as a very simple map of the cognition of a simple sentence. Yeah. So this is the question which I gave last time, but I just want to show this. This is the map of cognition of a simple sentence, of the sentence uh, Devadatta Kokspais, Devadatta Odanam Pachiti, very simple sentence. So the vyapara or the activity is at the it's the it's the element that is primary in the cognition. And the result of that activity, namely the softening of rice, is the vikliti, is the pala, the result of that activity. And that activity takes place in time, in this place, in this sentence, in present time. Devadatta Odana Pachiti. Pachiti is the verb there, and it is a present tense verb. Okay, so, so the time is a qualifier of the principal meaning, which is the activity. And the activity is located in the agent, Parashraya, he's the focus of the activity, the Kartar. And in this case, that karta is devadatta. And the vikliti, or the softening of the rice, is located in the, ka in the other karaka of principal importance, the karman, which is the palashraya, the substrate of the result of activity. In that case, 
it is the Odin on the right. And what's at the bottom is not important. It's the various uh, uh, properties and qualities that are located in the uh, direct object and in the agent. In this case, uh, so Odinatwa is the jati. That's what rice is. It's pumlinga, masculine gender resides in it, and single number resides in it. In this case, Odinum. And same, similarly, single number resides in Devadatta, the agent, and masculine gender also resides in the agent. And these parts of speech are then denoted by, uh, sorry, these, these objects, which are the principal elements in the cognition resulting from the sentence, are denoted or qualified by various parts of speech and various morphemes. And this diagram shows the morphemes that denote those parts of speech. So the dhatu, the root fat, denotes the, I've indicated these by dotted dark lines, denotes the activity and the uh, result, the softening of the rice. That's what's important for us here. And the, uh, uh, the suffix on the end of the verb denotes time. And that's what we'll be talking about today, this discussion about why it is that the uh, vipakti, that is the, I mean, the, uh, in this case, the ting, the verbal termination, is accepted as denoting time and the other views which argue against that. So now I'll put this away and let's proceed with uh, this gives you some framework of of what we're talking. Now let me can open the other one. Just have a presentation, Jota. No. Think. It's not. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Since. Yes. Can you do full screen? Can you do full screen? Full screen, do like the other one will. Oh. There must be a way to make this full screen, no? This is, there should be a, a button. No, there, there must, there's a way to make it full screen, isn't there? No, sir. No, Yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. No. That's it. Yeah, Charles. Okay, so first, uh, this is an overview of what we'll discuss today. Uh, talk about verbal affixes and the cognition of time, the meaning of rules that introduce these verbal affixes. Affix is a word for suffix and infix as well. 
So I, I, just to understand suffix here. Mm -hmm. And then we'll talk specifically about the relation of verbal affixes to the cognition of time as described by Batodi, Bat, Batodi Dikshita in his Vayakarana Siddhanta Karaka, Kaundabhata's Vayakarana Bhutara, the Vayakarana Bhushana, and Nagesha's Karama Lagu Manjusha and Lagu Manjusha. So uh, people speak about activities in, in different times, in the past, the present, and the future. And Pananian commentators describe verb forms that distinguish activities in several times, distant past, simple past, present, simple future, and distant future. There are other distinctions that are involved in the prescription of suffixes after verbs. So some suffixes are prescribed to denote actions or to signify actions which are not direct experience of the speaker, actions close to the present, wished for activities, activities in actual or hypothetical causal relation to each other, cause and effect sentences, or if then sentences, and commands. So all of these things are, are independent of time, but we'll deal with those first five categories of time. The way that Panini derives verbs is by introducing various abstract affixes, which he simply calls L, after a verbal root, depending on how the speaker intends the activity denoted by the root to be taking place, whether at a specific time, in a certain causal relation, as wished for, as imperative, and so on, or in one of those various times that we mentioned, the five times. And then he replaces that abstract L affix by specific verbal terminations called ting. Ting is, a, is an abbreviation for tiptasji, siptasta, midbas, masta, tanja, tasa, tan, tvam, idvati, mahi. And this is a list, basically, of the 18 verbal terminations, nine in the active voice, nine in the middle voice, three each for the third person, second person, and first person, and each of those three, and three each for singular, dual, and plural. So nine, nine times nine times two is 18 verbal terminations. <clears throat> and these, which specific verbal termination is chosen depends on whether the agent is denoted or the object is denoted in a passive sentence, or, and on the agent or objects, uh, person and number. And there is also a way of denoting the action itself. So now the issue that's debated concerning time is first of all, the nature of time and action and the verbal cognition that arises from the various parts of speech and the units that comprise speech forms. Well, there are some authors who have dealt with these philosophical issues. Sarvishwara Sharma translated Bhaktahari's discourse on time with Hela Raja's commentary on it. My teacher, Professor Cardona, wrote a long article for a volume in the American Oriental Society on time, Bhaktahari and Patanjali's engagement with the Vaisheshika and Nayaka and Madhyamaka philosophers about the nature of time. We won't be dealing with these issues. We'll be dealing with the more technical issues uh, that we'll touch briefly on that philosophical issue. There are various editors and translators of the works that are related to those that I'll be dealing with today. Uh, the Vayakaranabhushana and the Vayakaranabhushana Sara The specific question that we'll deal with today is how do Pananians associate specific temporal conditions with the elements of verb forms? And how do the later Pananian cognitive scientists, and I call Patoji Dikshita, Kaundabhata, Nagesha, cognitive scientists, 
How do they analyze the verbal cognition that arises from verbs and their parts? How does the verbal suffix generate cognition of a specific time when it is the verbal root that denotes the action that takes place at that time? Okay, so the verbal root is denoting the action. Action is the principal thing in the cognition of a sentence. The action is happening. It's questionable whether time even exists separate from action. Is time something different from action? Can we know time by action by separate from action? Balram is wearing a watch. The watch keeps time by motion, by action. So is time something separate from action? If it's not something separate from action, how can something different from what denotes action, denote time. So let's look first at what the commentators have to say about the introduction of verbal suffixes. First of all, Panini introduces the L affixes in temporal conditions, in various temporal conditions by these sutras. Lung in past time, Bhute, Lung in, in on a dhyatana pastime, that is distant pastime, as the commentators explain it. Parokshe lit introduces lit or perfect terminations in distant pastime, which is out of the speaker's cognition, that is narrative tense. Vartamane lat, present time. Lurit sheshecha is future time. And anadhyatane lut is distant future time, as the commentator explain it. And then uh, this rule replaces the L affixes by verbal terminations. So in, in these rules, the L affix is in the nominative. The temporal condition for that affix is in the locative case. And the verbal root, which comes in by or anuvriti from uh, 3191, dhatoho is in the ablative case. So the meaning of these rules puts together the syntax of the words. Uh, meaningful statements to provide time, as I've indicated here, but I already translated as we were looking at it. So let's wait. So, how do we interpret the locative in these rules? Vartamane is a locative in present time. Okay. L occurs in present time after a root. What do we mean by in present time? And how do we construe that locative with the affix or with the root? So uh, some interpret the locative, the vartamane, as that which is to be denoted, that is abhidheya. So in numerous rules that introduce affixes in which semantic conditions are stated in the locative, the Kashita commentary explicitly interprets the locative as that which is to be denoted. So the affix niche, which causes, uh, produces secondary causal roots from base roots, uh, is interpreted this way, hate is the, is the locative. Uh, and uh, uh, the Kashika comments, tasmin abhidheye dhatoho nich pratyakavati, that is the, the suffix, the a, occurs after the root, if that is to be denoted, tasmin abhidheye. Okay, so this is clearly saying that the thing in the locative is what is denoted by the suffix. And sometimes uh, there are glosses designating the semantic condition as an artha, a meaning. So here he says uh, in this rule, dhatoho karmana samana kartakadi chayamba is the Pananian Sutra. And the Kashika, well, we, what we have here is ichayam. Uh, providing the affix sun, 
start to produce secondary roots, which indicate that one desires to do the action denoted by the base root. And so uh, each I am desire is in blockative. Nakashika says, Ishi karma yodhatur, ishi naiva, samana karta tasmad, ichayam arte va sampratyayo bhavati. After a verbal after a verbal root that is the direct object of ish to desire and has the same agent as ish, the affix sun optionally occurs in the meaning desire. He says, in the meaning desire, that is ichayam arte. And specifically, when time is being denoted, he mentions it also as the uh, as the meaning to be denoted by the affix. So here, let's cut to the chase. He says, bhute arte, okay, in the meaning past time. So he takes bhute arta, which is denoted by love. But pratyayo bhavati bhute arte. And in the... Uh, Next sutra, Gnitaha Ktaha, he says, Vartamane Arte Kta Pratyaya Bhavati. The suffix Kta occurs in the meaning Vartamane, present okay, or occurring. Unadayo Bahulam, sim similarly, he says, Vartamane Arte uh, Unadayo Pratyaya Bhavati. The apex is Moon, etc., variously curm and to denote the meaning of time, uh, present time. Okay, that's one view. Uh, and, and sometimes, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, a couple more. You mentioned specifically Bhute uh, Kale, okay, in past time, he says. Uh, the affix occurs in past time. in future time. So these are our rules where the uh, Kashika commentary has formulated his gloss in a way that tells us that he considers that time is the thing that is directly denoted by the suffix. These are more of the same. That's Go ahead. Patanjali also mentions this interpretation. Patanjali is the author of the Mahabhasha, the great ancient commentary written in about the second century BC. On, should I turn this one off? Oh. Yeah. Uh, that uh, the L affix denotes a specific time. So here he says, uh, Patanjali says, Tato lung, lung bhavati bhute kale. So the, the suffix lung, that is that denotes simple past, uh, simple past time, in, occurs in past time. Tato adyatene lung. Anadhyatene bhute kale lam bhavati. Okay, the suffix lam occurs in uh, non today past time, distant past time. Parokshe <laughs> lit. Okay, same. Now, uh, on the other hand, most of the verses, most of the uh, common commentary of glosses on these rules take the opposite point of view that the root denotes the semantic condition not the suffix the root denotes the semantic condition so in this case on, on commenting on this this uh, sutra that introduces lung in past time the kashika says bhute arte vartamana dhato ho lung pratyayo bhavati Okay, the, the affix lung arises after a root that occurs in past meaning. So here he's taking the, the root as denoting the past meaning. Okay, and similarly with these others, he, uh, he puts it as, as phrases the gloss, taking the time 
as a qualifier of the meaning of the root rather than as what is directly denoted by the suffix. And uh, here also, vartamane arte vartamana dhatoho lat pratyayo bhavati. The affix lat arises after a root that occurs in present meaning. So it's the root that occurs in present meaning, not the suffix. Siddhanta uh, Kamudi by Bhattodhi Dikshita similarly glosses rules. Uh, oops. Well, let's just skip to that one. No, let's, let's do all three. Bhutartha vrdehe dhato lung syat. Again, the apex lung should arise after a root whose occurrence is in past meaning. The apex lung should arise after a root whose occurrence is in past meaning, is in, is in, a, in a past meaning preceding the current day. Anadhyatana bhutartha vrdehe dhato ho. And here he says, Vartama. For action, the apex let should arise after a root whose occurrence in a current action. Vartamana kriya. Vrte datoho. It's the root that occur that is is denoting the current action. So these glosses of the Kashika and Siddhanta Galmudi designate time as a qualifier of the action denoted by the root. They do not indicate addition of time to the L affixes that are provided. This implies that time is not the object denoted by the affix. Time is the attribute of the action that is denoted by the root. Patanjali similarly has such statements, associates time with the action, so under Bhuha Dhayodhatavaha, the sutra that tells that all roots are termed dhatu, he says, Nantaina kriyam bhuta bhavishyad vartamana kalaha vyajyante. Not without action are past, future, and present times expressed. Present, okay, the time is not expressed without action. And in this statement, he uses the word vyajyante which implies that the L affixes do not denote time, as vyaj is, is the very word that's used later by uh, those who are Alankara Shastrins, who are uh, distinguishing denotation from secondary indication and from vyanjana, the uh, implication or figurative sense of a word, but it's a tertiary, I'm sorry, a tertiary meaning of a word, suggested meaning. So, so these uh, times are just suggested is the implication of Patanjali's sentence here. They're not denoted. So then these uh, the syntax of these uh, statements fit together. He, when we have a statement like bhute in past time, the term dhatu recurs from the three one ninety one dhatoho as a heading. So the object noted by the root is qualified by time and its action. What is it? Kapunar dhatu artha. What is it that's denoted by the root? Kriya action. So then he says interprets the. Uh, syntax, kriyayam bhutayam, in past action. It's past action. What is the implication of what Patanjali says? Specific times are qualifiers of action, which is denoted by the root. Specific times are not directly denoted, but perhaps even only tertiarily suggested by various LA fixes. Now let's look at what the Cognitive scientists say, first, the Doji Diksha says, Vayakarana Siddhanta Karaka, which is a text of about 80 uh, verses uh, that describe all of the uh, significance of, of uh, various morphemes. So it's a short, a brief text, 
and Kaundabhattas Vyakaranbhushana Sara and Vyakaranbhushana are commentaries on this text. Patoji Dikshita details which parts of verbs denote the agent, the activity that takes place in the agent, the object, and the permutation that takes place in the object as a result of the activity of the agent. So here we have, for example, in the Devadatta Odanam Pachati, which I showed earlier, Devadatta is the agent. Devadatta has a certain activity, that's his Vyapara. And he performs that activity on the Odana, on the rice, which is the object. And the permutation that takes place in the object is the vikliti, or the softening of the rice as it gets cooked. And there are various parts of verbs that illuminate or co-signify means which are denoted by parts of the verbs. So uh, they may illuminate or co-signify the agent as the substrate of the activity who's performing activity. So the agent, the activity is in that agent and the object as the substrate of the resulting permutation. The softening takes place in the rice. So this rice is the substrate of the softening. So in the second karika of the Vayakarana Siddhanta Karika, Vatoji Dikshita says, Palavya parayor dhatu ashrayetu tinga smritaha palitthanam vyaparas inartas tu visheshinam the root is held smritaha to occur in the sense of the activity vyapara and its result pala while the verbal terminate the tingaha are held to their substrates ashraye activity is principal with respect to the result pale dhanam vyaparaha while the meanings of the verbal termination Qualifiers. Tingartas tu visheshana. Uh, he goes on, why oh, that showed again? Uh, in verse 22, he says, Vatamane parokshe shwo bhavaniyarte bhavishiti. These are the five times. Vidya dhau, pravatana daucha, kramat nyaya lata dayaha. So this is these are the elephants. Lot lit lot lit lot lot. These occur in these meanings. He says. Uh, we won't go into too much detail, but uh, uh, lot occurs in vartamane time, in present time. That's what we'll deal with. Okay, and. He details uh, other LA, the other four LA fixes in their meanings. Let's go ahead to uh, the cognition from the morphemes of verbs. So he says, denotes the activity, vyapara, and its result, hala. The verbal terminations denote their substrates, that is, the object, karman, which is the substrate of the and the agent, the karter, which is the substrate of the activity. Ashraya karma, vyapara ashraya karta. I'm sorry, this, uh, yeah, this is this is Kaundabhata now. Not, this is now Kaundabhata's commentary. Vyakarana Bhushana Sara, yes. And he uh, specifically did not that the verbal terminations denote the activity or result because their cognition is already obtained from the root. Once something is denoted by part of speech, it can't be denoted by another because there's a principle, uktartanam aprayoga. You don't use a speech form for what has already been stated. You don't repeat yourself, in other words. <laughs> Uh, so since since uh, since the pala and the vyapara, the result and the activity are denoted by the root, they're not denoted by the suffixes. 
The verbal terminations are the locus of the primary denotative relation to the agent and the object. And this relation consists in the power to generate cognition. Okay, what he, what he means by denote is that that speech form is what causes the hearer to have the cognition. So he said, ting iti bhodhakata rupa shaktihi. Shakti is the name of this primary denotative capacity or the power of the word, okay? Ting shu eva. It, 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 it's in the nations alone. Okay, so the terminations denote the agent. Look at that, all that's simple. That doesn't tell us about our subject, which is time. Uh, but to summarize meanings, he says, the activity of Vyapara is principal with respect to the result. This is describing the structure now, which I showed you in that diagram in the beginning. The Vyapara activity is principal, the result is qualifier. And four meanings of the verbal terminations also qualify the, the, the activity and the result. Agent qualifies the activity, the object qualifies the result, number qualifies whichever is denoted by the verbal termination, that is, the agent in an active sentence or the result in a passive sentence. And what we are interested in is the last time qualifies the activity, the via para. of how time qualifies the activity, the term time recurs in the sutra that pre prescribes, for example, the LA fixed lut uh, in present time, and uh, the dhatu denotes action, there, and the activity, the vyapara, is principal with respect to the result. Therefore, the specific time denoted by the verbal terminations that replace LA, LA fixes qualifies the activity. And this then it gives a justification of why time does not qualify the other meanings. Okay, time does not qualify the agent because the agent exists after the action takes place. And it doesn't qualify the, the object because the object also exists it does, the, object, the, the cooked rice doesn't exist until after the action's finished. Mm -hmm. And so you have to use a future tense it's when David Dutt is cooking instead of the present tense. And these are his arguments given here. He gives, Count of Atta, uh, concludes the following. The meanings of the verbal terminations serve as qualifiers the activity alone is principal in the cognition. Eva cha tingarto visheshanam eva is only a qualifier. Bhavana, that is the activity, eva pradham. And L affixes co signify the temporal conditions. He says the root dha denotes action in general by the primary word meaning relation of idha and indicates the secondary or lakshana, the activity, vyapara, qualified by specific times. The affixes are used to convey the import of the root with respect to activity qualified by a specific time. So this is a view that's saying the suffixes help to illuminate the fact that the root denotes the, the root activity causes the cognition of the time, but the L affixes help to illuminate. They help to illuminate that meaning. Marul, Marulakara comments in his Shankari on the Vayakara Nushana, Sara. The L affixes co-signify the very I hope this is still the Uh, I think that's right. I think it's it. Okay, the L affix is co signified with various specific points. Because time is the substrate of everything, action is located in time. 
So the root, which denotes action that occurs in time in general, secondarily indicates activity qualified by a specific time, such as present time. Activities being so qualified is due to relation between a locus and the thing located in it. Generally, you have to have a relation in order to have secondary uh, implication by a, uh, or lakshana. And this is the relation that allows that lakshana. The activity is located in a specific time, such as present, as the present. So the L affixes serve as co-signifiers by conveying that the root bears a secondary word meaning relation to the activity qualified by a specific time. This is a, how he clarifies the whole structure of the time and its relation and qualifying status of the action denoted by the root. There's another view, and he expresses now this second view. L affixes are established denoting specific times by concomitant presence and absence, unway and vieti. This is how you determine what morphemes denote what. Because concomitant presence and absence is the procedure that establishes the denotation of speech forms in general, not accepting that L affixes have the primary denotative capacity with respect to specific times, would undermine any affix having primary denotative any affix having primary denotative capacity. In other words, parse the speech forms, parse the verb into parts, you always see that the Present text tense suffixes is associated with present time. And when you have a past tense suffix, you don't have present time. So by concomitant presence of the of the suffix L the L suffix with the present time and the absence of the L suffix with the absence of present time, we know that the L of L affix denotes present time. This is how we know anything in the world. So if you if you don't accept it, you're undermining the variability of our Capacity to know anything. This is the argument, and it's a good argument. Anvayagi lat adi means denoted. shown by Karyakaranabhava, that is the relation of cause and effect, is, is shown by showing the concomitant present of the cause with the effect and the con the concomitant absence of the cause with the absence of the effect. Okay, so in his, in Kaunapata's Vayakarana Bhushana, he elaborates this in more detail. Time is made known by verbal terminations, either by, now he gives both views, either by the primary denotative relation or by the secondary indicatory relation. If by the latter, it is not noted, denoted by the root. After articulating objections to both views in 10 lines, he dismisses the objections on the ground that both views have been set forth in the source text and are supported by logic. In other words, he supports both views. Either one is good. However, uh, in defense of view one, an L affix is, he defends the first view that L affixes co-signify time by saying time is really no different from action itself. Present time really means the currency of an action. Since time is no different from action, what we mean by present time is that the activity we're talking about is actually happening. So there's nothing else to be denoting except that the action is happening. And future time, there's no such thing as future time. So future time is just that the activity we're talking about hasn't happened yet. And past time is, is that the activity we're talking about has already finished. So, so there's no time. It's just not happening yet, happening, or already happened. And so LA fixes just co-signifies these properties of action. This is the argument in favor of the fact that the root denotes time because there is no such thing as time. It's just the action happening, already happened, or about to happen. Okay, let's skip the detail here and go ahead. Uh, then he defends the second view. 
L affixes denote time. This is the proper sense of the rules that introduce them. First of all, Vartamane Lut is the rule. Isn't it obvious that the L affixes introduced to denote Vartamana, present time? Second, various times delimit activity. The times are delimited. It's, it's not just action in general. It's past, present, or future action. Delimiters have a separable status, even if they are intimate properties of the activity. So we're delimiting the activity by present, past, and future. These are delimiters. And delimiters have to be something separate from what they delimit. Root can convey activity even without the cognition of time in the absence of a verbal termination. So there are words which say, for example, the word cooking. The word cooking doesn't tell you when cooking takes place. It doesn't designate any specific time. And since we can designate the activity of cooking without talking about any time whatsoever, termination is present, then associated with whatever is also cognized. So putting a denotative relation on the part of numerous, this is the final termination, on the part of numerous roots to various times paired with a single affix for each time would be prolix. If you're going to say that every single root, there are 2,000 past, present, and future time, say that uh, these 10 L affixes denote time, isn't it more uh, uh, more efficient to have it denoted by 10 things than 2,000 things? Uh, yeah. So, uh, here he says, evam vachakatvepi nanupapatihi. Therefore, it is say that it noted. Katahi vartamalo la vacha eva. Therefore, present time is denoted by the LA fix lat. Vartamane lat iti sutra sorasa. That's the obvious meaning of the meaning of the sutra, Vartamane Lat. And then he uh, goes on. Vakipadiya, verse 392, Kriya Bhedaya Kalastu Sankhya Sarvasya Bhedaka. Time serves to differentiate, act, differentiate action, while number is, different, is the differentiator evident, everything. Of everything. So and then he says, Iti Vakyapadiyena Kalasya Kriya Parichedaka Twa Abhidhana Cha. So the Vakyapadiya says that that time is the delimiter of action. And it does not make sense that an entity is a delimiter of itself. Okay, so and then it goes on. And then it goes on. Uh, because of the brevity in comparison, let it be stated that the capacity to denote the property of currency that is present time belongs to the single affix LUT. This is the, uh, and then, then he goes on to say that Vastutaha, really, Vastutaha, really, Kalaha, no. Yeah, I have a, another typo. I, I found. Balram Shukla read my paper and found numerous typos, and I reread it and found numerous typos and corrected them, but there is still more. This is not directa. Kalaha na atirita. Time is not separate. But kim ya eva, but it's just action itself. Okay. Uh, the property of currency in the form of being begun and not completed that is located in activity is the meaning of LUT. The meaning of other LFX is similar. That is the ultimate truth. 
Therefore, the property of currency is simply denoted. Okay, this is in favor of that the denotedness by the L affix. Yeah. Now, Nagesha uh, has some differences of opinion on this point. Um, first of all, the denotative relation that properly belongs to the verbal terminations. He talks about, uh, so it's not the L affixes, he says, that denote anything, because the L affixes are always replaced by these 18 specific terminations, tip, tas, chi, sip, tas, ta, etc., denote. It's these 18 terminations that denote. And this denotative capacity of the L affix is superimposed on the L affixes, which they replaced. replaced. It's just artificial. Yes. And then he says, since, oops, that is so. Specific time. The Kartra or the Karman are the meanings of the replacements of the LA fixes. Present time is the meaning of the replacement of LUT, not of LUT. Okay? It differs from uh, Kandabhata on this point. And he also differs about the passive. And when you have a sentence like Gramam Gachiti Chaitraha, Chaitra goes to the village, the cognition that results from this is. The activity that occurs in present time has as its single agent chaitra and is conducive to conjunction, that is conjunction of chaitra, which is located in the single object, which is the village. Right? Chaitra's going to the village results in chaitra having a relationship of conjunction with the village. And in the passive, gramo gamyate chaitrena, Kaundabhata says the cognition is exactly the same. And actually, if we look at what Panani says, Panani also seems to say the cognition is the same. But on this point, Nagesha says the cognition is different. It's the pala that's principal in the cognition, not the activity. It's the conjunction with the village that's principal in the activity when you say gramo gamyate chaitrin. So Nagesha takes the cognition to be the conjunction located in the single object, which is the village, which results from the activity which occurs in present time and has chaitra as its agent. <laughs> these, you can imagine these sentences in Sanskrit. Just say here, tatacha gramam gachati chaitra ityatra ekatva vichinna Chaitra bhinna kartaka vardama kalaka grama bhinna karma nishta ya sanyogas dadanukula vyaparaha. That's the active sentence, cognition. It is a gramo gamyate ma uh, maitrena. Here he has maitrena. I don't believe the addition here. He used chaitra in the first example. He's going to use chaitra in the second example. But anyway, the addition has maitra here, a different guy. I don't think it's a typo. I think it's a misreading of the manuscripts. Anyway, uh, doesn't matter if it's Maitra or Chaitra. Maitrena ityatra, gramo gamyate Maitrena ityatra to Maitra kataka vartamana kalaka vyapara janya grama bhina karma nishta sanyoga iti bodha. Now, in his Lagu Manjusha, which is a longer text, the Parama Lagu Manjusha, the extremely light <laughs> Manjusha, chest of jewels. Uh, uh, so, so uh, Kaundabhata wrote the Vayakarana Bhushana. Okay, the Vayakarana Bhushana and Vayakarana Bhushana Sar. The Vayakarana Bhushana is the gem of the jewel of the grammarians, the Vayakaranas. 
So Nagesha outdid him because he wrote the jewel box. The whole box of jewels. Okay. So he's competing with him. Uh, so, but he makes clear, Nagesha makes clear in his Vaya, uh, Vaya Karana Siddhanta Manjusha, Manjusha that time is just co signified. He says, such a dyotya eva. Okay, not vachya, it's a dyotya, it's just illuminated. Because it is experienced in a dependency relation as a qualifier. Visheshinataya anvayano bhavat. The root denotes the action qualified by time. The suffix. Vartamana kriya vachakat dhatoho lat ityadi vartamane lat ityade rartaha. The meaning of sutras vartamane lat, etc., is lat occurs after a root that denotes current time. The root denotes the current time, he says. So Nagesha differs from uh, Kondabhata. And then he says, it would be prolix to posit denotative capacity in multiple replacements for the abstract verbal affix lut. That is one for each of the 18 verbal terminations that occur in different numbers, persons in Parasamanipada versus Atmanipada is active versus middle. Okay. And then he says, and because of the prolixity in positing denotative capacity for the many replacements of lut that have as their base a single root, Ekadhatu prakritika aneka lat adeshanam shakti kalpane gauravat cha. Okay, so there's there's only one root, but but there are 18 affixes that come after it. So isn't it simpler to have the one root denote the time rather than the 18 affixes? Seems that way, doesn't it? Seems like a good argument. Okay, these are my conclusions. First of all, the Ashtadhyayi commentators, the glosses in the Kashika and the Siddhanta comedy designate time as a qualifier of the action denoted by the root. Vartamane arte vartamana bhatoko lat pratyayo bhavati. Okay, and similarly in the Siddhanta comedy. Vartamana kriya vratehe dhatoko lat syat. Okay, no, no, no uh, disagreement there. Patoji in his Vayakarana Siddhanta Karaka determines that the activity and the result are the meanings of the root, time, number, and the Karaka, that is the agent and the direct object, are the meanings of the verbal terminations. The activity is principal in the cognition and is qualified by its result. The agent is the substrate of the activity, the object is the substrate of the result. Number qualifies this substrate, and the stem forming affixes that form the present stem, for example, or the passive present stem, co-signify the dependency relation of the substrate, that is the karma or the karta. And Kaundabhata, on the precise relation by which time is denoted, approves of two views. First of all, the verbal root denotes time because it is an intimate property of the activity itself and the verbal termination just signifies time. And the second view, the verbal termination, verbal termination denotes time because such a relation is more economically established by concomitant presence and absence. He favors the latter view, in my opinion, because Positing a denotative relation on the part of numerous roots to various times compared with a single affix for each time would be prolix. Now, we have some competition here. Nagesha says he unequivocally, unequivocally agrees with the first view, not the second view, that, that the affix is just uh, uh, co signifying. And he paraphrases the rules Vartamane Lut in this way. The meaning is that the alpha ethics alpha occurs after a root that denotes current action. Vartamana kriya, current action, bachakat, dhatoho, after a root which denotes current action, the L ethics occurs. 
And he argues that it would be prolix to posit denotative capacity in multiple replacements for the abstract verbal affix LUT rather than a single denotative capacity in the root. Now, my question to you is which is more prolix? To posit denotative capacity in 2000 roots or to posit denotative capacity in 180 verbal terminations, that is 10 LA fixes, each LA fix replaced by 18 verbal terminations, that's 10 times 18 is 180. <laughs> okay, 180 is less than 2000. So which view is better? And then, uh, so Kandabhat is right. I mean, Kandabhat can count better than Nagesha, in my opinion. We'll come just a minute. 2000, 2000. Yes. Well, the verbal roots have, verbal roots have, more verbal roots have been added to the Dhatupad in the course of the 23, 2400 years. It's a list. It's a, it's a list. Well, yeah, it is a list. So list is limited. And and then uh, concerning the real nature of time, the philosophical question, time is really no different from action itself, we accept. Present time is the currency of the action, future time is the not arising of the action, past time is the completion of the action. Kondabhatta and Nagesh agree on this point. But we accept Kondabhatta's view that the LA fixes denote these properties of action and the properties are delimiters of action. Therefore, it doesn't matter whether they're really action. Our conception is what matters. Grammarians have always accepted that it's the conception of, speechers, of, of speakers that have association with speech forms, not the reality. And this is the disagreement they have always had with the Nyayakas because the Nyayakas want to make the speech form somehow associate with real nature. The grammarians understand that it's not real nature out there that's being denoted. It's the conception of speakers. And that's why when you can say something like uh, sky flower or rabbit's horn, and we have a conception, okay? We, have, we can imagine that even if though it doesn't exist, we have the cognition and it's the cognition that is denoted by speech forms, not the reality. So LA fixes denote these properties of actions as conceived by speakers. So thank you. That's my conclusion of this analysis. Very, very specific point of, of, of grammar. So now I can take uh, questions. Uh, uh, can, I can I say something for a minute? Because we can't see each other. Uh, my suggestion is that uh, Balramji say a few words because in the beginning he didn't say anything. So Balramji, you can give a comment on commentary in today's presentation. Hindi, please give a shape. Exactly that. And... Uh, 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 friends, I have just uh, one or two little announcements. Tomorrow, uh, we have a program, a kind of extramural program of book launches. So please do come. Uh, one has to, uh, uh, you know, one is uh, Professor Madhav Hada's wonderful book, Mira. It has been translated into English by Professor Pradeep Trakha, who is also associated with the Institute. So please come the launch of that book and there's a launch of another book also uh, which one is that tomorrow dusri kitab hai launch hoga pradeep nayak ji ki kitab hai sir haan ji pradeep pradeep nayak who was a former fellow and he's in the orissa civil service he has a book on i think agricultural economics or something which Sage has brought out, and Professor N.P. Singh will be talking about that book. I wonder if Professor N.P. Singh has got a copy, an e-copy at least. I wish he gets Not it. Really. We can uh, call Pradeep Nayak and ask him to make a copy available, please. I would also like some information about that book. 
uh, Ritika ji, if I have to speak, even if I have to speak for two minutes about the book. And uh, then we have a kind of poetry reading at the end of the, uh, you know, uh, term. There'll be an Israeli poet who will join us home to WebEx. And uh, some of us may present one poem each in addition. And finally, uh, the second announcement is on Monday. I'm trying extremely hard to get uh, our uh, concluding webinar in our distinguished series by Dr. Meghnath Dehai. Uh, who is long professor of economics at London School and uh, uh, also House of Lords here for life, but an extraordinarily fertile mind. And he's got a new book called Rebellious Lord. I've just got a copy. I've just started reading it. But the topic that we are talking about, I suggested it to him. It's my top. The topic I suggested to him is heteropolarity. Heteropolarity, the new world order. So this is Monday, 3 o'clock, WebEx. Uh, he joined us from London at 9.30 a.m., I hope. And then 15th, we'll officially have a startup, 15th or 16th, as the case may be. Balram ji, aap kripaya kuch shabd kahiye. Dhaniwaad. हम सिस्टम एनालिस्ट को कहें कि तस्वीर भी दिखे किसी को फोटो दिख नहीं रहा है भैया धन्यवाद है ये सभा जय हम आचार्य पीटर शार्प मोरे अत्यंतम सूक्ष्मम कठिनम च विषयम अत्यंतमेव सरल महत्वपूर्ण कार्य उनका जो महत्वपूर्ण योगदान है वो बहुत गाढ़ ही निष्ठा के कारण ही हो सकता है और भारतीय परंपरा के प्रति उनकी जो निष्ठा है वो हम लोगों को सुख शिक्षित करती है जैसा कि भारतीयों में नहीं दिखाई करता है बड़ा अमीर बहुत सुंदर कहते हैं जब हम अपने देश की प्रशंसा करने चलते हैं विश्व गुरु था भारत तो मनु का एक श्लोक बोलते हैं सारे लोग आकर के यहाँ के ब्राह्मणों से सीखी लेकिन ये कहना हम भूल हम भूल जाते हैं कि हमारे वराह मीर ने क्या कहा उनकी ऋषि की तरह पूजा होनी चाहिए और आप ध्यान रखिए ऋषि शब्द जो है वो ब्राह्मण शब्द से ब्राह्मण से बहुत ऊपर है ऋषि जो ब्राह्मण है ब्राह्मण शिष्य है ब्राह्मण जो है वो नीचे की कैटेगरी है ऋषि की अपेक्षा तो भवन और जो विषय उन्होंने बताया वो व्याकरण तो कठिन है लेकिन व्याकरण से भी कठिन व्याकरण दर्शन उसमें भी नव्य व्याकरण का विषय उन्होंने सुना और इसलिए आपको बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद मुझे
उसको मैं फिर नहीं कह रहा लेकिन आप लोगों से प्रार्थना है कि संस्कृत लाइब्रेरी डॉट ओ आर जी जरूर देखें आप हम सब में भारतीयों में संस्कृत पढ़ने की एक ललक होती ही है और वो खासकर साठ सत्तर के बाद और जगती है बहुत ज्यादा जगती है कि हमको पढ़ना चाहिए आ, हम संस्कृत के बहुत सारे ग्रंथों का हैंड फॉर्म में देखते हैं लेकिन आपने डिजिटाइजेशन शुरू किया है और हजार से ज्यादा ग्रंथ आपकी लाइब्रेरी में है और उसमें अगर आप चाहें तो अगर उसको क्लिक करें किसी सेंटेंस में कोई शब्द है उसको क्लिक करें तो आपको वो बताएगा कि इसका इसकी मार्सोलॉजिकल एनालिसिस क्या है ये किस शब्द का के किस रूप और किस वचन किस वचन और किस विभक्ति का रूप है इसके साथ अगर फिर क्लिक करें आप तो वो आपको डिक्शनरी पर ले जाएगा और सारी डिक्शनरी पैंतालीस के लगभग डिक्शनरी जो है वो एक साथ जुड़ी हुई है तो आप किसी भी संस्कृत वाक्य का आप उसमें कितने सारे शास्त्र हैं अर्थशास्त्र है और व्याकरण शास्त्र के बहुत सारे सुभाषितों के ग्रंथ हैं तो हमारी रुचि होती है पढ़ने के लिए हम लेकिन हम अर्थ नहीं जानने के नाते बहुत बार हताश हो जाते हैं तो ये लाइब्रेरी इस तरह से बता बनाया गई तो फैकल्टी ने स्लोकअप जैसा कि हमने कहा इंटीग्रेट किया गया है उसको कि आपके व्याकरण को और भाषा को और कोशों को एक साथ देख सके इतना ही नहीं वो शब्द वेद से और बाद के व्याकरण में किस तरह या बाद के ग्रंथों में किस तरह से आया है ये सारी चीजें एक साथ जुड़ी थी दो हजार दो में इसकी स्थापना की थी और वो निरंतर परिवर्तमान है और संस्कृत संस्कृत लाइब्रेरी डॉट ओ आर जी एस एन ए आर आई जी और लाइब्रेरी वही साधन है रूप से और संस्कृत लाइब्रेरी डॉट ओ आर जी तो इसको आप जरूर देखें बहुत अधिक लाभ होगा इससे लिखा भी रहे हैं अब थोड़ा सा विषय पर जैसे ये है तो आप देखें इस पे प्रेफरेंस है हेल्प है होप है अबाउट है टेक्स्ट आप देखें डोनेट भी देखना चाहिए डोनेट डोनेशन भी कर सकते हैं ये सारे ग्रंथ जिसमें हजार से आगे जो संस्कृत के दो बहुत महत्वपूर्ण जो बंगाल में लिखे गए उन सारे उसको डिजिटाइज करके इसमें डाला गया है और हम देख सकते हैं इसके साथ ये जो है उसमें आप किसी भी लिपि में देख सकते रोमन में भी देख सकते हैं और भारतीय लिपियों में भी देख सकते हैं कन्नड़ इत्यादि लिपियों में भी हम देख सकते हैं suggesting you for भारत रत्न अवार्ड हैप्पी टू एक्सेप्ट सो हियर हियर यू कैन चेंज द स्क्रिप्ट अदर स्क्रिप्ट्स सो इफ यू वांट टू सी इट इन गुजराती और कन्नड़ सी कन्नड़ बंग बंगाली मलयालम तेलुगु सारी लिपियों में हम देख सकते हैं गुरुमुखी गुरुमुखी व्हिच वन डू यू वांट टू सी बंगाली So then we can go back to this uh, dictionary. We can just go this way. <laughs> oh, because uh, Bengali doesn't have a a V. We have to look up something else. Oh. Oh, it is 
So, in our whole tradition, where say, see, right from Rigveda, Krishna Shabda, so this uh, is Monia, and, Monia Williams Dictionary. All these things are there. So, but there are there are many dictionaries. Mm -hmm. So let me just show you the preferences once again. So the dictionaries, there are actually many dictionaries. The initial page just shows four, mm -hmm. but we have 45 dictionaries, including uh, the Shabda Kalpa Dharuma, mm -hmm. which is Sanskrit, Sanskrit dictionary, and uh, Vachaspatyam, Vachaspatya also is here. So you just click Amarakosh. Amara, Amara Kosh. Amarakosh is is not a dictionary actually. We don't and we haven't made it a dictionary yet. I don't know what I just did. Okay, okay. अगर हम अपने ग्रंथों को देखें कि ज्ञान की सुरक्षा किसी कीमत पे होनी चाहिए शतम में वो पाय हमारे जैन और इसीलिए अधिकार की बात हमेशा आती है कि हम किसके हाथ में विद्या दें ये बहुत ये आधुनिक लोगों को बहुत ज्यादा ऐसा लग सकता है कि अधिकारियों की चर्चा क्यों होती है तो क्योंकि ज्ञान जो है वो हमारी आत्मा का संस्कारक है ज्ञान परतरण नहीं भगवान कहते हैं कि नहीं ज्ञान में सदशम पवित्र नहीं है और ज्ञान भाषा के अधीन है और भाषा व्याकरण के अधीन है और हमारे यहाँ व्याकरण का महत्वपूर्ण क्यों हुआ क्योंकि इसका कारण है कि हमारी परंपरा बहुत अविच्छिन्न रही ये सेमेटिक परंपराएं जो ये कहती हैं कि हम फिर से पुनर्जागृत हुए वो अपनी पुरानी परंपरा का उस तरह से पास पासदारी उस तरह से नहीं कर पाती है लेकिन चूंकि हमारी परंपरा नितांत अविच्छिन्न है हम पुराणों को भी उतना ही प्रामाणिक मानते हैं जितना वेदों को मानते हैं यद्यपि थोड़ा तारतम्य है तो वेद लेकिन भाषा तो बदलती रहती है तो भाषा को सुरक्षित रखने के लिए व्याकरण बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है व्याकरण का अभूतपूर्व विस्तार और विकास भारतीय परंपरा में इस कारण से होता है और व्याकरण निरुक्त और शिक्षा ये तीन वेदांत जो है वो केवल छह वेदांगों में से तीन है जो है वो केवल भाषा को समर्पित है एक फोनेटिक्स है एक एक सिनेटिक्स है और एक मॉर्फोलॉजी है एक तरह से पद विज्ञान है व्याकरण तो इतना सूक्ष्म हमारे यहाँ विकास हो सका कि वो, वो उसके सिद्धांत जो है वो केवल भाषा मात्र के लिए नहीं अभी तो भाषा सामान्य के लिए आ गए अब जब व्याकरण भाषा विशेष से भाषा सामान्य की ओर जाता है तो वो यूनिवर्सल ग्रामर की ओर जाता है तब वो जाता है सिमेंटिक्स की ओर तब वो व्याकरण से व्याकरण दर्शन की ओर जाता है तो आज की जो चर्चाएं हुई वो केवल संस्कृत भाषा से संबंधित नहीं थी यद्य संस्कृत भाषा इंफ्लेक्टिंग लैंग्वेज है संयोगात्मक भाषा है और आजकल की भाषाएं आइसोलेटिव हो गई है तो थोड़ा सा अंतर हो सकता है लेकिन सफिक्सेस अब भी है अब भी जो शब्द हम सुन रहे हैं उस शब्द के सुनने के बाद कुछ अर्थ की हमारे मस्तिष्क में आती है उन अर्थों को अगर हम अलग अलग करें तो शब्द को अलग अलग करके किस अर्थ के अंश को किस शब्द के अंश के साथ जोड़ेंगे इसको हम उसके साथ कनेक्ट करेंगे सिग्निफायर कौन है ये हम कैसे बताएंगे वैसे तो वैयाकरण जो है अखंड वाक्यवादी है वो कहते हैं कि वाक्य ही सत्य है वाक्यात पदाना अत्यंतम प्रविधे को न कश्चना और ये बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट बात जो पांचवी शताब्दी में श्रीहरि ने कही थी और सारे लोग ये मानते हैं कि वर्णों से मिलकर के लेटर्स जो है वो पद बनाते हैं पद जो है वो वाक्य बनाते हैं लेकिन वैयाकरण कहते हैं ऐसा नहीं होता वाक्य से टूट करके शब्द बनते हैं और शब्दों से टूट करके हम वर्ण बनाते हैं इसका मतलब वर्ण जो है उसकी सत्ता वास्तविक नहीं है काल्पनिक है वो कहते हैं कि
भाषा और वाक्य अनंत होते हैं आप उसका समय नहीं होंगे लेकिन सेकंड सेकंड लैंग्वेज एक्विजिशन की बात हो रही है जब हम दूसरी भाषा क्योंकि सीमित शब्दों से असीमित वाक्य बनाता है बनाती है भाषा तो असीमित वाक्यों में संकेत ग्रह नहीं होता हो सकता कथित वाक्यों में संकेत ग्रह भावात हर वाक्य के अर्थ को लोग नहीं जान सकते तो हमें कल्पना करनी पड़ती है कि राम जाता है में राम जैसा एक अंश है वस्तुतः राम जाता है में राम नहीं है ऐसे ही जैसे गुलाब जामुन में गुलाब नहीं होता और जामुन नहीं होता तो इस जैसे आरिस टोटल जैसे सोक्रेटिस में राइट नहीं है आर ए टी नहीं है तो बीच लेकिन ये सब कहने के बावजूद भी जब हम कहते हैं कि जब सेकेंड शब्द बहुत महत्वपूर्ण होते हैं पदों की आवश्यकता होती है तो फिर पदों को वो मान लेते हैं फॉर द टाइम बीइंग भैया करण भी और जो वो फिर उनको ये भी बताना होगा कि कौन सा अंश जो है किस अर्थ का जो जो अर्थ हमारे मस्तिष्क में आ रहा है उसका कौन सा अंश किस अंश के द्वारा अब हम क्रिया पद पर आए क्रिया बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है तो को भी क्रियात्मक ही मानते हैं तो अनलाइकली तो ये क्रियापद जो है वो बहुत महत्वपूर्ण क्योंकि तो जो है वो क्रिया की और व्यापार मुख्य विशेषक शब्द लोग ऐसा मानते हैं तो जैसे वह खाता है खाता है खादत इसको सुन करके बहुत सारे अर्थ हमारे मस्तिष्क में आ जाता है एक व्यक्ति एक व्यक्ति वर्तमान काल में खाने की क्रिया कर रहा है इतने सारे अर्थ आ जाते हैं तो इन सारे अर्थों में जब हमने वाक उसको भी तोड़ा अब हिंदी में तो तोड़ने की गुंजाइश ही नहीं है क्योंकि हिंदी में उस तरह से व्याकरण का विकास नहीं हुआ संस्कृत की तरह या किसी भी भाषा में उस तरह की हाथ और ती हाथ तो खाना एक तो है व्यापार एक एक्टिविटी है वो खाद का वो खाने का वो खाने का अर्थ है यानी खाद धातु का अर्थ है बाकी अर्थ जो है कर्ता अर्थ भी आया उसके अलावा हाँ संख्या अर्थ आया एक व्यक्ति खा रहा है दो नहीं खा रहे हैं बहुत नहीं खा रहे हैं और काल अर्थ आया तो ठीक है क्रिया जो है एक्टिविटी जो है धातु का अर्थ हो गया कर्ता जो है निश्चित रूप से इससे आएगा क्योंकि प्रत्यय जो बदल देंगे खाता हूं खा, खाता है खाते हैं जो खाते हैं करेंगे तो आप संख्या बदल रहे हैं इसका मतलब है कि ते हैं से संख्या जाने जा रही है खा वाला अंश उतना ही है उसी तरह से है लेकिन सबसे सबसे प्रॉब्लम है कि चीज जो है वो काल है क्यों काल सबको अवच्छिन्न करती है करता है जगत आमाश्रयो मत तो काल को कौन अवच्छिन्न करेगा काल को कौन डिलीमिट करेगा इसलिए वैयाकरण में बहुत ज्यादा झगड़ा ये है कि कौन डिलीमिट कर रहा है कौन बता रहा है काल को वो वो धातु का अंश या प्रत्यय का अंश तो अच्छा बताना भी दो तरह से हो गया एक तो वाचन करना एक द्योतन करना जिसको आप डिनोट करना और इंडिकेट करना कह रहे थे वाचन का मतलब है कि जिसके सुनने के तुरंत बाद अर्थ आ जा रहा है मतलब जिसमें एम्बेडेड है मीनिंग तो जो लोग कह रहे हैं कि धातु में सारे काल के अर्थ जो है वो तो धातु में एम्बेडेड है प्रत्यय आकर के बस दिया जला रहा है जिससे वो इलिमिनेट हो रहा है तो वो वो इंडिकेट बस कर रहा है वो डीलिमिट वो वो डिनोट नहीं कर रहा है वो सिग्निफाई कर रहा है सिग्निफायर जो है जो मेन सिग्निफायर चीफ सिग्निफायर है वो धातु है और ये जो है वो क्रिया जो जो प्रत्यय लगा हुआ वो बस उसको डिनोट मात्र कर रहा है मात्र कर रहा है तो काल के पक्ष में इसीलिए ये समस्या होती है काल वस्तुतः है भी कि नहीं है काल क्रिया के साथ एक है या अनेक है मुझे लगता है इस, इस विषय पर उन्होंने बहुत कार्य किया है राजू ने वो अगर जुड़े होंगे तो बताएंगे इस विषय में वैयाकरण भूषण तो दो मुख्य मत है एक तो ये कहता है कि काल जो है वो अर्थ है धातु का और जो प्रत्यय है वो बस उसको इलिमिनेट कर रहा है लेकिन कुछ लोगों का ये मत है 
जिसे काउंट भट्ट कह रहे हैं और काउंट भट्ट का ये सैद्धांतिक मत माना जाता है जैसा कि टीचर टीचर जी ने बताया कि जो प्रत्यय है उसी के द्वारा वो डिमोट हो रहा है क्योंकि प्रत्यय अगर आप हटा दीजिए तो आपको काल पता नहीं होगा और ऐसा लगता भी है क्योंकि आप देखिए क्रियाओं से सिर्फ काल व्योधित नहीं होते क्योंकि हम जानते हैं कि टेंसेस दो प्रकार के टेम्पोरल है एक मॉडल टेंस है एक वृत्तिवाचक लकार होते हैं और एक क्रियावाचक लकार होते हैं जैसे मैं जाता हूं इसमें तो आप क्रिया आ, समझ रहे हैं लेकिन मैं जाऊं मतलब उसमें आप काल समझ रहे हैं मैं जाता हूं यानी वर्तमान काल में जा रहा हूं लेकिन मैं जाऊं इसमें कोई काल व्योधित नहीं हो रहा है काल अगर अर्थ होता धातु का धातु का अर्थ अगर काल होता तो जाऊं और जाऊं दोनों जगह धातु है जाना तो दोनों जगह है तो दोनों जगह काल ज्योतित होता लेकिन जो मॉडल टेंसेस हैं, उसमें काल ज्योतित नहीं होता इसका मतलब है कि उसमें वो काल की स्थिति नहीं है दूसरी चीज जो लोग ये कहते हैं कि काल और क्रिया दोनों एक है इसलिए क्रिया धातु के द्वारा ज्योतित हो रही है तो काल में धातु के द्वारा ज्योतित हो, होगा उसका खंडन वाक्यपति के अनुसार कौंड भट्ट ने किया है कि काल जो है वो हो रहा है डिलिमिट कर रहा है किसको क्रिया को तो काल और क्रिया अगर एक होते तो स्वयं वस्तु अपने को डिलिमिट नहीं कर सकता दूसरा दूसरे को डिलिमिट करता है इसके अलावा ये बात है कि काल जो है वो क्रिया के साथ एक नहीं हो सकता क्योंकि अः जहां जहां क्रिया है वहां वहां काल तो है लेकिन काल बिना क्रिया के भी हो सकता है काल काल ने क्रिया को अवच्छिन्न किया जैसे आप आ रहे हैं तो वर्तमान काल ने आपको अवच्छिन्न किया आपके आने की क्रिया को लेकिन ये कुर्सी जो पड़ी हुई है वो तो इनानिमेट है इनानिमेट कुर्सी भी किसी काल में अवस्थित है तो इसका मतलब है कि निष्क्रिय वस्तुएं भी काल के द्वारा अवच्छिन्न हो रही है जन्या नाम जनक काल संपूर्ण संसार में जितनी वस्तुएं उत्पन्न हो रही हैं सबको उत्पन्न करने वाला सामान्य कारण जो है वो काल है इसीलिए ईश्वर का दूसरा नाम भी काल है तो काल जगताश्रय मतः संपूर्ण संसार का आश्रय है इसका भी आश्रय है जो इनानिमेट है एनिमेट है तो इनानिमेट एनिमेट जो चीजें हैं उस उनके में क्या है तो वहां हम काल देख सकते हैं इनानिमेट चीजों में हम काल कैसे देख सकते हैं तो ये मुख्य रूप से दो मत है और आपने केवल नवकरणों को नहीं आपने प्रारंभ के लिए आप महाभाष्य से जो कि 2000 साल पहले की रचना है और 17वीं 18वीं शताब्दी तक आए तो 1800 वर्षों का जो अद्भुत हमारा चिंतन है जिसको आप कॉम्यूटिव साइंस कहते हैं और निश्चित रूप से वो कॉम्यूटिव साइंस ही है हमें बहुत आवश्यकता है कि उसको हम सूक्ष्मतया देखें कि हमारी परंपरा ने किस तरह से बहुत ही अद्भुत विचार प्रस्तुत किए हैं अब आ, मैं आप लोगों से चाहूंगा कि कुछ प्रश्न सर के प्रश्न के बाद ऑनलाइन लेते हैं I did not understand much, but throughout the lecture, I was constantly reminded of lectures in philosophy of science, books on philosophy of science. Uh, I was particularly reminded of a book, uh, *Logic of Modern Physics* by P. W. Friedman, and uh philosophical foundations of physics by Rudolf Gardner. Uh, now you know to 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 ask a specific question. Uh to talk about car, cause, effect, time, you don't talk much about the space that intrigues me. Uh physics, philosophy of science talks about uh, time and space goals. You talk constantly about time, but not about the space. That's one intriguing point that comes to my mind. Another thing is, 
that P.W. Bridgman says that definition, he, 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 he defines definition. You have not defined a term. Verbalization of a definition is not a definition according to it. He says that you have not defined a term unless you produce a measuring instrument. For instance, you have not defined the term of length or width unless you produce a measuring rod or measuring tape. So, you know, in physics, definition requires measurement. So, uh, do you have equal uh, concern in philosophy of uh, grammar about measurement? Mm. You know, just one example. I was constantly reminding of reminded of those books, and since I uh, heard those lectures, uh, read those books, 60 years back or 50 years back, I had to look into uh, you know, check by Google to remind some of the authors and some of the books. So, you know, these are some intriguing thoughts that come to my mind. I must say, throughout the lecture, I didn't understand much, but I remained constantly attentive. Yeah, nice. That's an interesting, interesting question and interesting uh, comment. Uh, the grammarians uh, uh, are very conscious uh, not so much as a measuring instrument, but of the uh, mode of evidence, some mode of some evidence. Pramana is the word in, in Sanskrit. So they are always asking, "Kim pramana? What is the what is the evidence?" And and there the the canonical answer is shukta pramana kala vayam vayam karanaha. Grammarians have the speech forms. As their evidence, yes, okay, this, the speech of, of of the linguistic community is the evidence that that they're examining, and that the Nyayakas may say, well, they're looking at some facts outside, but that's that's not relevant for for what uh, is going on with speech and the cognitions that are associated with. But what's relevant is what people understand and what the speech forms are. So the grammarians are saying, "Shut the phenomena we have as our mode of evidence speech forms. But otherwise, the measuring instrument, uh, there's no discussion of. <laughs> as far as space versus time, I was focusing on time, though there are interesting discussions about uh, direction in grammar um, and, uh, and how, how directions are understood. I, I myself have written a little bit about direction words, but not so much about uh, space in the sense of, of physics. So, but, but time is, is so much more a part of speech. It was part of the universal grammar that language does not actually give privacy to space, but more to time. That's a good, that's a good question. I'm not too familiar with the universal grammar, mm -hmm. but, uh, um, the, the object of universal grammar is to characterize what uh, human faculty, human faculties of language have in common across languages. And, uh, uh, you know, all languages are, are talking about directions, but the, the way physics talks about space is a little bit different than and the way that people are engaged with language. Basic time patterns in the present class direction. You don't have that in the library in the context space. Yeah, we have we have in front. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Why is there no similar division of space? Well, there are similar. What I'm saying is there are there are different directions. You know, people talk about in front or behind or to the right or the left or above or below. Uh, before or after, you know, before something or behind something, um, and uh, east, west, you know, north, south. These these kinds of direction words are very very much part of language. But I don't find very much. Yeah, not in verbs. 
The way time defines. Yeah. Well, because verbs have to do with action, and action has to do with time. Mm -hmm. What's that space? That's, that's a good point, and it needs some more thought. I, I, I'll think about that some more. The reasons for me. Agar, G. G, G, sir. Sir, DR, go ahead. This was very interesting. And um, the question of the extreme at the same time, Kirovsky, I also had. I say that the Pramana, in some cases, you cited these sentences like Grama and Gamate Chetra. Grama and Gamate Chetra. If you could cite such examples after every. Then you would define it. It would be easier to understand. Mm -hmm. And since I have studied this, how to forms when I was a student uh, in these categories of lateral tau, lateral tau, lateral tau, you would also present that within these categories. I could also understand it. Yeah. Well, what we were focusing on here was basically. Uh, David Dataha Graf, uh, David Dataha uh, Odin and Pachiti, or David Dataha Graf and Gachiti, with Gachiti and Pachiti in the present tense forms. That's what we were really focused on. Otherwise, we would have, you know, David Dataha Graf and Gamishiti, a future tense, David Dataha Graf and uh, Agachat, a distant past. In terms of the philosophy, that's you and Yeah. Because I've also studied how these grammar. Yeah. So, just that is very limited. Although I should not tell you, it's still that much. Well, what we were what we were focusing on was this one issue of of the verb form, like pachiti or gachiti. So at one point, you use the term prolix and suffix, and the verbal term in I was confused. Oh, prolix means uh uh. uh Takes a, 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 a too much uh, effort or too much. Gaurava Purna. Gaurava Purna. Gaurava Purna. Verbal termination. Verbal verbal termination is uh, the endings on a verb. Pratyaya. Pratyaya. Verbal termination is the ending on a verb. Pratyaya. Pratyaya. Verbal termination is the ending on a verb. Pratyaya. Verbal termination is the ending on a verb. Why verbal termination? Inantas are called verbal termination. Yes. Sanskritena Samega Vagatsi, Sanskritam Janati Acharya. We pressed online Jude Huehe, other way Pushna Chahi, Tulka Swagathe. तेरा जन जड़ जुड़े हुए हैं हमसे बहुत ही ऑनलाइन अगर नहीं है तो हम पूछते हैं सुब्रमण्यन जी से आप यहाँ आ जाएं जो रिकॉर्ड हो जाएगा Why did the issue of see, any of the dhatus could signify any time? But uh, it's a timeless character. So, in order to indicate time, you need a suffix or whatever is the suffix. Without that suffix, the verb itself doesn't denote any time. So obviously the suffix helps in denoting the time. So why is it a matter of debate? Is it because of the philosophical question whether there's any time? Like you said, everything is present time. Okay. Something is going to happen or something has happened or something like that. That, that it's not at a philosophical level that is probably no uh, distinction in time and therefore the issues 
Republican minister, it seems, is, uh, appears logical that you don't need that I mean, uh, debate at all. I think your, your question answers itself. Yes, this is the answer. Uh, partly, I think Kandabat agrees with you that the question is unnecessary. When he says Swarasat, okay, the Sutra Swarasat, from the very Sutra statement self. from the very statement of the Sutra, it's obvious Swarasat, the the old flavor, the old flavor, okay. Um, so, so uh, if there were this philosophical issue, it should be obvious. So I think it is the philosophical issue, the fact that that even in the Mahabharata in you know, the second century BC, this question was taken up of whether time is something is anything at all separate from activity. So, so that generates some complexity in the issue. But also the way you ask the question. You yourself said the time is, uh, I mean, the, the affix, the suffix helps. Well, if it helps, then it's helping something else, you know, of the time, which is the root. So the, the question, the debate, the, there was never any debate that the, that the suffix had some part in making known the time. The question is, was it the principal thing that makes known the time, or is the root the principal thing that makes the you know, it makes known the time and the suffix is just helping. Okay, and the suffix was always accepted as being involved. So this is, this was the debate. Does it just help or is it the primary uh, responsibility for the cognition of time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, there's not any, any kind of time. time times suffixes zero suffixes suffixes Context, no, no. Look, look, the context is what is happening. What is happening? One time you have thought that the shop is what is happening. So you have done it. If you have done it, you have to say what is happening. So you have to say what is happening. No, I have told you that the shop is what is happening. The shop is what is happening. But the shop is what is happening. तो निश्चित रूप से आपको ये बताना पड़ेगा और उसको स्वतंत्र मान करके बताना पड़ेगा पदवादी हो करके बताना एटॉमिस्ट हो करके बताना पड़ेगा तो जैसे मान लीजिए रमा रवि रमा है तो रवि में तो प्रत्यय दिखाई पड़ रहा है रमा में प्रत्यय दिखाई पड़ रहा है रमा जहां भी प्रत्यय लिप्त हो चुका है अगर अर्थ आप प्रत्यय में इंबेडेड माने यानी प्रत्यय को आप डिनोटर मानेंगे तो फिर गड़बड़ी हो जाएगी तो इसलिए इंडिकेटर माना गया है प्रत्यय को कि प्रकृति में सारे अर्थ सारे अर्थ अकृत में एम्बेडेड है उसी में निहित है प्रत्यय बस आकर के उसको जैसे जैसे कमरा जो है वो सफेद रंग में हो लाल जलाइए तो लाल होने लगेगा और पीला जलाइए तो कमरा पीला दिखने लगेगा तो बालक में सारी शक्तियां हैं सारे कारकों की शक्तियां हैं और बालक आता है तो नॉमिनेटिव को व्यतीत करता है फिर एक्यूजेटिव को व्यतीत करता है एब्लेटिव को व्यतीत करता है तो एब्लेटिव वगैरह की जो कर्तृत्व शक्ति है कर्मत्व शक्ति है या करणत्व शक्ति है वो सारे बालक जो प्रातिपदिक है यानी जो फॉर्म है रूप है मूल उसी में सारी चीजें निहित हैं वो आकर के बस इलिमिनेट करते हैं को सिग्निफाई करते हैं सिग्निफिकेंस तो उन्हीं का है उन्हीं शब्दों का है so on one hand you are indicating more than cognitive relation to the so saying that these e verb functions which are indicative of uh of uh activity in time. So then both in that much is 
also located outside. So well, there were two. There were two views. Okay, so the one one view was the was that the uh, so the bodhanatma is the okay, the power to make known the object, the premonition of the object, and uh, and that's what we mean by uh denoting what i use in english is denoting or the vachika is the word in sanskrit sanskrit is vachika as opposed to diotaka it just helps it illuminates the uh denotative capacity which resides elsewhere okay. so on on one point of view the denotative capacity the uh bodhika shakti is in the dhatu and in the other view, the bodhaka is in the termination. And the view that the bodhaka shakti is in the dhatu, the termination helps. It's a diotaka. It helps illuminate that shakti. Very nice. Yes, please. Guru hit. Why not? वो सब समझते हैं हिंदी है संस्कृति ना होता तुझे तो देश हमारा अकरण शास्त्र या संस्कृत है ये बहुत बड़ी समस्या है ये बहुत बहुत ही समृद्ध शास्त्र है वो समझने के लिए जो पश्चिम में है इसको कैसे समझें ये बहुत बड़ी समस्या है इस कड़ी को जोड़ने के रूप में आप हो गए हो गए बहुत सारे लोग जो काम कर रहे हैं मुझे लग रहा है आप तो हमारे नए भक्तों जी दीक्षित हो गए और हम आप लोग भी यही कर रहे हैं और कोई प्रश्न जी 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 प्रोफेसर सिंह Meaning doesn't reside in words; it resides in sentence. sentence. Uh, that's one thing. Syntax. Uh, so, so a syntax of uh, sentence or uh, syntax. Uh, another thing that I can try to ask. You know, Amar Kosh, which was from Bolivia. Uh, I suppose it's a lexicographic dictionary in Sanskrit. For it, for it, uh, dictionary and poetry, verse form, yeah, yeah. verse form, yes. and uh, Raja Amar Singh who composed it uh, was this small king, prince king, uh, during the Gupta period somewhere in North India, and uh, you said that it's not a dictionary, so. Uh, that's what intrigues me. Uh, I, I, we would call it a thesaurus. Mm -hmm. okay, a, a, oh, a, diction, a dictionary has a certain certain organization. It's a, a, a list, usually in alphabetic order, and uh, and you you have the list of, of words where it has its meaning in a separate entry. But uh, a thesaurus is organized differently. Mm -hmm. The th the Amara Kosha. Is a thesaurus. It was written for the purpose of authors. It's organized by topics, so so the author knows what well, usually traditional scholars they memorize the text, so they have uh, access to its contents. Yeah. <laughs> but the text is organized in chapters and subjects, yeah. and. It's like Rajat's the soul English, you know, you can go to and there it's a, uh, a higher level, uh, categorization of subjects. And you locate the subject and then you can see which word it is you want to use in the poetry you're creating. So the thesaurus is organized 
I would say, more for authors who are composing mm -hmm. than it is yes. for readers who mm -hmm. are trying to understand. And the, the dictionary actually is uh, the alphabetical organization of a dictionary is is uh, a phenomenon of of uh, a written document. Yeah. The thesaurus yeah. is a phenomenon of an oral document. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so it has to do with the time and and what was the principal mode of the conveyance of knowledge. And in, in ancient India, uh, oral tradition was more dominant than the written tradition. Uh, you have the written tradition uh, much more dominant, and there the written dictionary is, is, uh, has, plays a more of a role. And now in the modern age, the, the dictionary is actually, actually obsolete because uh, that's with the computer search. Yes, yes, yes. That's, that's true. That's all. But the dictionary modern sense. ہمارے <laughs> <laughs> By Jayanti Kosha, there are, there are several. There are so many dictionaries. There are many, there are many of these Kosha. Vishwa Kosha is there. Nanarkaranam Kosha. Rekaksha Kosha is there. So many Kosha. So the, the Nirukta, which was mentioned by the director at the beginning of our, our session, uh, uh, is, uh, is a commentary on the Nigantus of the, of the Veda. There were lists of difficult words. And the Nirukta was a commentary on those Nikantus. So that that was the beginning of this tradition of koshas. No, I my you know my education started in my village in a Sanskrit Barsala. Wow. And, uh, I was the you know most students were in the government prescribed course, some students were in Sanskrit. Course and uh, uh, Amar course was the book uh, that I heard they were mostly reading. Mm -hmm. So I was just uh, looking for you. Uh, I was not a student in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Most of my whole school goers were in the school, but they would keep on just. just oh. was it ever developed into a school of there, there are, uh, there are, there's a panini in grammar of, of Prakrit, uh, yeah. which is, uh, it is said to be, so Vararuchis, Vararuchis, Prakrit Prakash, you are mentioning to so, Panini is said to be the grammarian, first grammarian of Prakrit, but his treatise uh, is not available to us. Baudhone to Pura Darshan Shabdukrishan Kasit Kiyahe, Joseph Kibar, 
जो शांत रक्षित का आप देखें कथा संग्रह है उसमें शब्द प्राणों का रिक्शा और पूरा अबोहवाद जो है बहुत बड़ा लिंग्विस्टिक दर्शन दर्शन है ग्रामर में भी उन्होंने बिल्कुल वो कहते हैं कि व्याकरण जो है चंद्रभूमि का चांद्र व्याकरण जो है वो चंद्रभूमि बौद्ध थे और उन्होंने चांद्र व्याकरण भी व्याकरण दर्शन में व्याकरण दर्शन में तो बहुत एक तो जो वैदिक दर्शन है उनमें पक्ष के रूप में बहुत ही प्रबल पक्ष आता है ये ये जो अपोहवाद है तो वो एक्सक्लूजन को मानते हैं डायरेक्ट डिनोटेशन को नहीं मानते हैं कोई भी शब्द डायरेक्ट किसी अर्थ को कह ही नहीं सकता क्योंकि क्षण भंगवाद है हम कई चीजें मोमेंट्री है तो देर कैन नॉट बी रिलेशनशिप ऑफ डिनोटेड एंड डिनोटेशन डिनोटेड तो उन्होंने ये कहा कि गाय शब्द का अर्थ है नॉन नॉट नॉन काउ इस तरह से तो इसका खंडन तो सारे लोग करते हैं अलंकारिक भी करते हैं तक ने किया है और जितने भी जैसे कौंड भट्ट इत्यादि जब भी वो करते हैं तो इसका खंडन तो निश्चित रूप से करते ही हैं इसके साथ वाक्यार्थ को वो प्रतिभात्मक मानते हैं नहीं यानी वाक्यार्थ के विषय में स्टैंड बिल्कुल वैयाकरणों का स्टैंड है लेकिन शब्द के विषय में उनका स्टैंड जो है वो अपना स्टैंड है तो डबल स्टैंडर्ड कर करके उसको खारिज किया जाए अच्छा भारत में जितने भी दर्शन हैं वो सभी दर्शनों की अपनी लैंग्वेज फिलोसफी है इसलिए भारतीय दर्शन को एक तरह से सिनोनिमस माना जा सकता है लैंग्वेज फिलोसफी का ये शिवाद्रवाद लैंग्वेज फिलोसफी से ही एक तरह से इंतजार हुआ है तो बहुत महत्वपूर्ण और रोचक चर्चा है अब कोई प्रश्न मुझे लग रहा है जिज्ञासा नहीं है न वर्चुअल न एक्चुअल सर कोई प्रश्न हो तो आप सर मोहता प्रश्न के लिए आए हैं सर अधूरा वयम समान वयम सर्वेशम शुभम अस्तु शांति रस्तु पुष्टि रस्तु बहुत धन्यवाद आपके प्रश्न के लिए और कमेंट्स अब सभी लोग आमंत्रित हैं समोसा और चाय के लिए नहीं नहीं Yeah, I'm going to do that.